I fixed it, Microsoft. Apologies on choosing Windows Hell Edition, the software that makes your computer less powerful, reliable, manageable, and entertaining with a uh, Windows uh, Millennium Edition. And you can uh, connect to the internet quickly and easily because we illegally built it into the operating system. Windows Me is even the exact same to use than previous versions of Windows. Setup will take uh, from uh, 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. To begin the setup, click next, or, or hit just hit just hit cancel. So today we're going to take a nostalgic dive into uh, Microsoft's operating system, Windows Millennium Edition, often uh, shorthanded to Windows Me. And while I waffle on a little bit, uh, you're going to see me installing the operating system. I think that's something that uh, too often people uh, forget about showing. In terms of the operating systems, uh, you know, I, I've always gotten a nostalgic feeling out of actually installing the program itself. And I'm going to show you that part of it. When I think about it, uh, I actually might have Windows Me to thank for my eventual uh, power uh, user status. And that's because I so disliked Windows Me that I actually uninstalled it. Uh, my dad had just gotten a computer, a Windows 98 Dell machine. Uh, he put it in the basement, which is where all our main computers went. Brought the computer that was already down there, which was a 1997 uh, Gateway PC, into my room, and, uh, and that is what I started uh, using and tinkering with on the PC. And now Windows Me uh, came out, and uh, my dad installed it on my computer, and then I realized very quickly that uh, something wasn't right here. Uh, so some of it was good, I have to say. Like I remember really digging uh, the uh, Windows Media Player. I thought that looked really cool. And I loved going into full screen mode while the music was playing and had those cool little, uh, you know, kind of uh, color effects and stuff. Uh, specifically, I remember getting really into Paul Simon at the time. And uh, I remember listening to quite a few uh, Paul Simon tracks on uh, Media Player 9, I think. I also remember really liking the overall icon style of uh, Windows itself. Some of it looked a little nicer, but uh, I had already, at the time, started getting into the older games. Uh, I started getting uh, some emulation on the Amiga side of things, I remember, but uh, I was oftentimes uh, uh, going back to some old Amiga games, not on the Amiga, and actually like the names I remember you know I remember playing these games on the Amiga but I was looking for them online and you find them uh, for DOS so I'd be playing them in DOS mode and I was noticing that this, this huge thing is a big problem for me getting uh, all these old games is I, mean, I have Windows Me now and it wouldn't it wouldn't let me into DOS anymore and uh, that's the thing about uh, Windows Millennium Edition is it's still Windows 9X. It's Windows 95. It's Windows 98. It is built on the same code, and all of those were built upon DOS as the underlying operating system. You know, it's essentially it's still a DOS application of some sort. It's a little more complicated than that, but uh, it's it's all built upon DOS. And each one of these things could be restarted into MS-DOS mode, pure DOS. Uh, here we, we're actually in DOS right now. Uh, maybe some people will know what uh, what it's showing right now. But since I had already, you know, I was already into all these old things, and now I have Windows Me, and, I'm, and it's, it's, it was really confusing to me getting into all this old stuff. And suddenly, I'm like cut out of it. I'm like, what is wrong? So this is what I credit for me becoming a power user because this is how am I going to do this like I had to actually look online like why is it doing this how can I fix this what is the problem and I I learned these things I learned that well Windows me even though it's 
It's still built upon the same technology. It has liter Microsoft has literally stopped you from entering into DOS. And their reasons for this are, I don't know. I don't know what the reasons are. I, I think it's because uh, previously, say you had upgraded uh, Windows 95 or Windows 98 from a previous DOS installation. What would happen is Windows 95 would still have those auto-executables and it would boot up with those auto-executables and what you what could happen is Windows 95 or 98 uh, could uh, start with a, a DOS compatibility kind of mode like where your hard drives and things are running in 16-bit mode uh, because of you know what your auto executes have for the DOS mode. Uh, all of this could just be deleted. You could just delete that stuff from your auto executables and it would run fine. It was a sneaky way for Microsoft uh, to show people that Windows Me, it's faster. It's faster now because I think they got in trouble with Windows 98. They claimed Windows 98 was faster than Windows 95 and it's just no, like, no, like doesn't happen with Windows. They always add more bloat to each new version. And with Windows 98, they integrated Internet Explorer into the operating system. So it's, even when you're not online using Internet Explorer, if you just use the file menu system, you're still using Internet Explorer. It slowed down the system. Uh, Windows 98 was slower than Windows 95, but they claimed it was faster. And Microsoft was getting into some issues here. Windows 98 actually had a lot of improvements over Windows 95, and, and in the long run, it's probably the best of those uh, Windows 95-ish uh, systems there. But Windows Me was such a laughing stock at the time, and it got no support. It got no uh, real support because, well, it was released. I don't know. It's like this. It was like this transitional period. Uh, maybe it's just Microsoft trying to get everybody used to uh, the style and look of uh, Windows 2000, which was built off of the Windows NT engine, and uh, that would be the, su the successor to Windows 2000 would be Windows XP that was then merging the business line, the NT line, with the consumer uh, DOS line. Them merging the two together, once Windows XP came out, that truly was uh, the end of uh, the DOS era. And you had, if you had Windows XP, you had no hope uh, other than dual booting your system. That was long before there were any emulators you know, for PC kind of hardware at the time. Uh, they, they still hadn't gotten the Amiga right pretty much at the time. Uh, it is my impression these days that a lot of that history of Windows Me is being forgotten, and that there are actually a lot of people out there that kind of like Windows Me and think it's a good operating system to put on your retro uh, PC. And and to be truthful, now they're not entirely wrong with that recommendation. It's okay, it's an okay operating system as long as you keep in mind, like, this is what I want for, I just want this PC to be Windows 95, 98, Windows Me compatible, and some, some Windows XP stuff too, because they were still making, you know, 95, 98 uh, compatible stuff, you know, for quite a while there into the XP era. Uh, if, if that's what you have in mind, then Windows X, there's nothing wrong with Windows XP, but uh, there's nothing special about Windows XP either, and that's the thing that these people are forgetting about, I think. In this newfound softening of the opinions on Windows XP, it's forgotten that it doesn't offer you, really doesn't offer you anything Windows 98 didn't. So, yeah, you could recommend Windows Me to people, but why wouldn't you just recommend Windows 98 instead? Because Windows 98 will literally give you anything Windows Me can give you, plus you have your DOS support as well. There's no code in Windows Me really that makes it go any faster, again, more bloat than anything, so it would make it go slower. Uh, you know, the only thing that would make it go faster is those little tweaks, like making sure that 
you know, Windows doesn't start up with any of that stuff in the auto executable and stuff. You know, it's fake. It's fake fast. And uh, the things like uh, Windows Media Player 9, like that, eventually, with very savvy people who thought it was bullshit, <laughs> they figured out how to get that into Windows 98. So even Windows 98 on my machine now, I do have Windows Media Player 9. So all that stuff. Anything. There was literally never a driver made for Windows Millennium Edition that didn't have a Windows 98 version. There is literally no reason whatsoever uh, to choose Windows Me over Windows 98. That is my opinion, and I think the facts stick to it. And this is what I'm trying to impart on people who weren't around back then, or just, just overall, maybe they soft it's like it's a softening through the ages and they're not understanding what the feeling actually was at the time you think of if you, like you you are a power user to some degree if you're into these classic systems maybe you don't really get into the internals that much but just the fact that you're wanting to put old games and stuff on old hardware that puts you at least in the lower end of power users and if if you're choosing Windows Me, maybe it's a solid choice because technically I don't need Windows 98 either because I do have a dual boot system. I do have a multi-boot system where like I have DOS 6.22 on the C drive along with Windows uh, for work groups 3.11, and then I have Windows 98 on a separate partition. I literally never use the Windows 98 DOS. I never restart Windows 98 in DOS mode, which was MS DOS, you know, seven. I think I never do that. Uh, I always go to the actual DOS 6.22. So I'm, I am literally not using Windows 98 to with its ability to use DOS. You know, I could put Windows Me on there and uh, still use DOS 6.22, I think. Uh, but, yeah, but I, whatever. But, it does, but to me, I'll never forget just how terrible of a thing Microsoft did there. That was Microsoft you know, putting out a full-priced operating system that really didn't change anything. That really didn't make anything better. That, in fact, took out, ripped out things that it should not have done. And charging you full price. And in a year and a half, Windows XP would be released. You know, this is Microsoft at its worst in terms of pinching your wallets. They would do it again many other times with... Uh, Windows Vista and Windows 8, you know, th this is the same style as, you know, just tweak things, make things a little different, but we're not making it better, we're making it worse, actually, and then later on we'll make a better thing, <laughs> and then we'll get you to pay for it to fix what we fucked up in the first place. Yeah. A lot of people have softened their opinions on Microsoft. I, I, not me. <laughs> so I was already uh, backing up my... Uh, computer here, and uh, I was thinking maybe it would be a nice time to uh, reinstall uh, Windows Millennium Edition, and uh, let all of you out there uh, have your own gander at it, because I'm sure, I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that just passed this one by. Smart on you, good thinking. <laughs> there could not have been any regret uh, for your decision to pass by Windows Me. <laughs> It is so important, historically, historically it is so important to remember what the feeling was at the time. Uh, and no, like real power users hated this thing and, and I don't believe it was really recommended to normal users either, simply because it was already known that something was coming along the pipeline here. It's a stop gap, don't waste your money on this one and yes. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find some reviews at the time to, uh, you know, see what they were saying. Uh, maybe I was wrong, but uh, 
That is my impression because I became a power user because of this. You know, I searched out programs, and there was a program that you could install on Windows Me that would uh, reinsert the, your ability to use DOS. And I, I remember using that, but then I remember coming into problems with that. You know, every once in a while something weird would happen to that, and I ended up like screwing up my entire computer trying to get DOS back into Windows Me, and at some point, I just said, enough, enough of this, and uh, I asked my father for the Windows 98 disk, and I, just, I told him, this, this is what I am doing, I do not like this operating system, I'm going back to Windows 98, and that is what I did, I went back to Windows 98, and I have no regrets about doing that, so that is... When I took it upon myself uh, to do the computer work for my computer, like I don't care what you put on my computer, Dad. Uh, this this one's in my room, and I'm gonna have fun with it. Uh, goodbye, Windows Me. <laughs> That's what I did. Uh, so, uh, in a weird way, I have Windows Me to thank uh, for you know, me uh, you know, having to dive in there look up a lot of stuff online, uh, come to my own opinions, even try out some of that stuff, fail miserably, destroy the entire computer because of it, and then just say, no, to hell, to hell with this. Let's go back to Windows 98. And, you know, when I did get Windows uh, XP eventually, I was smart enough uh, to dual boot it. To, from when, one, one partition had Windows 98, one partition had Windows XP, and that is pretty much, uh, when Vista came out, that was the same thing. I went, I had a one with XP, one with uh, Vista. Uh, and Vista wasn't bad either, as long as I had that XP partition too. It's like, some things were better, a lot of things were worse. But since I had the XP, since I had both, it made it okay until Windows 7 finally came out. And Windows 7 was finally good enough that I didn't need a dual boot partition style uh, system anymore for my uh, newer computers, but I still use it for this stuff. So, yeah, that's kind of, I just wanted to have a nostalgic look at it all and uh, talk about it a little bit. Uh, I hope you all will uh, enjoy the uh, journey uh, with me. Let me know what you thought about uh, Windows Millennium Edition. And uh, let's get, uh, let's uh, get on with it, huh? All right, so how about we get to, to some uh, details. Now, Windows Millennium Edition here was first released uh, to stores on uh, June 19th of 2000. Uh, that is when it, you know, it would come with the new computer. Uh, that was on June 19th. It was released uh, to the public to buy separately as their own uh, upgrade or full version on September 14th of 2000. Coincidentally, uh, XP, Windows XP, would be uh, released, uh, I think, uh, October 25th of 2001, so just a tiny bit over a year, and that one was released uh, to the stores in August 24th, so it's like technically less than a year. You know, that's, that's, the, that's how short of a life this thing actually had. Microsoft would end its support for Windows Millennium Edition on December 31st of 2003 and the extended support on July 11th of 2006. So this is three years for general support, six years in total for the extended support. So that those are things like your security updates. And that was the exact, the exact same day that Microsoft ended its Windows 98 support. So, it's like... In terms of Microsoft, they had they did not give a shit that you had Windows Millennium Edition. Now Microsoft would offer a promotion for Windows Millennium Edition, which is where I imagine they got most of their sales from, from September of 2000 to January of 2001. Anybody with a Windows 95 or Windows 98 operating system could upgrade for just 59.95 when it would have normally been 109 for the upgrade. And then if you wanted yes. the full version, that would have been, you know, much more than that. If you heard me go, yes, that is that is because I finally uh, got in my networking to work here. Uh, 
it wouldn't have been this bad originally, but uh, the newer operating systems, I have I most of my PCs now, the newer PCs have Windows 7 on them. The newer operating systems, including XP, I think, had the same. The NT operating systems had issues, uh, you know, with backwards compatibility with the networking, even though it's using the same language, TCP, IP, uh, in terms of the network map. You can't just browse your networking folders and uh, find... Sometimes you can find the PC, but you can't actually access the PC, uh, especially from the uh, Windows 9X computers. There's always issues. But if you actually go into the address bar and you, you, know, you type in your uh, backslashes and then you actually type in the address for the computer and that is how you actually access your networking uh, drives and stuff uh, from Windows uh, 9X machines. And I would recommend everybody uh, figure out how to uh, connect your old PCs to the network. That is the overall uh, most convenient way to transfer files. It's not the absolute fastest way. I mean, I'm sure you can, you know, hook up a flash cart or, or maybe even go into a you know, some kind of networking thing where you go over the internet and have some file server or something. There are other ways to go about transferring files to the old computer, including just the good old floppy or a zip disk even, all of these, you know. I'm telling you, uh, it's a little more complicated to set up networking, but it is absolutely worth it. It is the best overall way to transfer files back and forth. In terms of the internet, uh, Internet Explorer is really, really starting to show its age. Uh, you know, you can go to Google, you can search on Google, you can't go to anything else. It just refuses pretty much to go to YouTube or anything else. It won't even just load slow anymore. It just refuses, period. It's all because they have the HTTPS now. HTTPS, even though we're not giving out our credit card numbers or anything, all of these new websites have decided that they want to encrypt everything and you know this has killed the old computers in terms of browsing the web so uh, you you definitely if you're planning on accessing the World Wide Web on your older computer like on a, a Windows a me machine here then you are going to want to upgrade uh, your browser from uh, Internet Explorer I would recommend to Opera because I, I believe Opera had Windows uh, 9X support for quite a while there. I'm using Opera 9 here. I think you can go to Opera 11 if you uh, also download another program, which is escaping my mind at the moment. But it, uh, with this program, it uh, I want to say like I don't know, Kernel XP or something. I don't know something like that. Uh, I have it for my Windows 98 machine, and that will offer you a lot of support for uh, the later programs that normally would only run on Windows XP, actually. But in terms of the web, you're never going to have that much fun on it. You know, you're not going to be browsing Facebook or anything. Uh, on your uh, Windows Me machines, uh, you know you can you can go to old oldversion.com. Remember oldversion.com. That is your friend there. You can go to certain places. You can download things. You know, find a couple places that you kind of like going to. Wikipedia usually works. Uh, that's the extent of the fun you can have on these older machines in terms of browsing the World Wide Web. So let's uh, switch gears here and uh, show you a little bit of opinion. This is from 2006 from PC World, an article they did about the 25 worst techs, tech products of all time. Microsoft Windows Millennium Edition makes number four. This might be the worst version of Windows ever released, or at least since the dark days of Windows 2.0. Windows Millennium Edition, a.k.a. me, or the Mistake Edition, was Microsoft's follow-up to Windows 98 uh, Second Edition for home users. Shortly after me appeared in late 2000, users reported problems installing it, getting it to run, getting it to work with other hardware or software, and getting it to stop running. Aside from that, <laughs> me worked great. And to its credit, me introduced features later made popular by Windows XP, such as System Restore. Unfortunately, it could also restore files you never wanted to see again, like viruses you had just deleted. Forget Y2K. This was the real Millennium Bug. 
Let's talk a minute about the new features uh, Windows Me brought to us. Yes, uh, System Restore was such a feature, and it did have some issues there running it, but that was, generally, that was a cool feature that I wish would have been in Windows 98, and that is, I don't believe there's any way you can uh, get uh, System Restore into Windows 98, but that has always been a feature that I have liked uh, from Windows. It also introduced... Uh, Windows a movie maker. I'm not sure if that one can run on Windows 98 these days But uh, you know Windows Movie Maker was uh, kind of cool I think a lot of youtubers actually used Windows uh, Movie Maker for uh, quite some time It had a uh, Windows Media Player 7 from the start. It could be upgraded to Windows Media Player 9 Again all those can be uh, put onto your Windows 98 machine uh, most of the new features that this thing added uh, could be run on Windows 98. There was more support for USB stuff, but again, Windows 98 had that support. You know, you had your image previews. You know, when you click on a JPEG in Windows Millennium Edition, it automatically opens up, you know, a kind of preview window. Whereas previously in Windows 98, it would have gone into uh, Internet Explorer to show you your pictures. But again, there were third party options. So you could, you know, view an image in a preview type of mode in Windows 98. Uh, DirectX supports to 9.0C. Again, that is, I believe you can get Windows 98 to have 9.0C as well. Now here we are enjoying some built-in games that came with the Windows Millennium Edition, including Space Cadet. We had Spider Solitaire earlier. Uh, these were first included in Windows 98 uh, Plus, the Plus Edition, which added lots of themes. Again, all of the themes, you know, you, you, know, you might have saw that tiger or whatever, uh, some of these backgrounds, all of these things, most of them were included in the Windows 98 Plus Edition. Some more uh, newer thoughts on uh, Windows Money Edition. What's worse, Windows Vista or Windows Me? May 19th of 2009. I think I saw this from PC World, but uh, I think first it was uh, in Computer World. Uh, Preston Gra with the news that Microsoft is recommending that some companies should abandon Vista deployment plans and move instead full bore into Windows 7. Microsoft is beginning to close the chapter on Vista. One that the company would rather forget. But Vista wasn't the company's biggest blunder. Windows Me was far worse. Vista is slower than XP, and when it launched, it had too many hardware woes. But it was also a major step ahead for Windows. The Windows interface got a much needed facelift. Plenty of new useful features were added, such as the network center and network map, and Arrow added some nice eye candy. I'll admit it, I'm a fan of Vista, and I think it's been unnecessary. Violence. Windows Me, on the other hand, was bad in just about every way. Start off with the name. It was officially named Windows Millennium Edition, which sounds like a bad knockoff science fiction movie with cheesy special effects. And come to think of it, that's not a bad description of the operating system either. Windows Me was full of bugs, slow and unstable. People had trouble getting it to start, getting it to stop, and handling it while it was running. The operating system was a follow-on to Windows 98 Second Edition and had no reason for being other than that Microsoft figured it better get something out the door in time for the year 2000. Some people, in fact, referred to it as the true Y2K bug. So, as we bid Windows Vista goodbye between now and October, keep in mind that no matter the complaints you might have about it, there was a Windows-based operating system that was far worse. And that is my overall feeling that I wish to impart on everybody watching this video because it really is my impression uh, that people are softening their opinions on Windows Millennium Edition and they're actually, some people are actually recommending people uh, go to Windows Millennium Edition for their uh, retro PC hardware. And I'm telling you, it's uh, it's not just the uh, original looks back in the day. You know, there are plenty of people today who understand, who realize that this was a blunder of epic proportions for Microsoft. It is worse than Windows 
Vista. I think I made fun of it on Facebook recently. For April Fools, I was like, you know what? I've just I've decided I've had enough of uh, Microsoft and their ways and you know you can't even you know shut down the computer anymore without it upgrading this is all in reference to Windows 10 these days people are having a lot of issues with Windows 10 uh, previously people had a lot of issues with Windows Vista people are forgetting just how much worse Windows Millennium Edition actually was now you did hear a lot of people referencing their the fact that Windows Millennium Edition had a lot of bugs that uh, there's I saw lots of reports of blue screens of death upon launching the operating system or shutting it down. It seems to be their opinion that Windows Millennium Edition is less stable uh, overall, even in its pure form, than Windows 98 was. I didn't personally run into any uh, blue screen of death issues in my very short look at Windows Millennium Edition here. I'm here. I'm, I'm playing, you know, various games and stuff. I'm showing you that uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the games, if you want to play, you know, your uh, Windows 95 era stuff, and this is Monopoly here. Monopoly is a uh, Windows 3 uh, era game. So, uh, you know, your, even your 16-bit games will work. Uh, it seems to me they will work fine in Windows Millennium Edition, so I didn't personally run into any issues uh, playing any games or anything. Uh, here, I will run into issues, though, as I install uh, Deadly Games here, which is a DOS game. Again, this is Windows. Uh, Microsoft has taken out the support for DOS with the Windows Millennium Edition. So, previously, a game like this should have run right in Windows 95 or Windows 98. It should have run perfectly fine in a DOS shell. We didn't even have to go into pure MS-DOS mode for a game like this. Uh, Windows 95 would have handled it just fine, but there is a problem. That problem is because we do not have access to our auto-executable or config.sys files, we cannot set... We can't, we can't use the command you know, set sound, which would have been a sound blaster command. Now, MIDI works, apparently. I don't know if that would work for everything. Now, I have a sound blaster AW, and uh, it's apparently it gets the address right, and it, it just, for some reason, it works. The MIDI did not need an auto-executable command to work, but your digital audio for sound blaster, you, know, you needed to uh, put a command in DOS, set sound. You needed to uh, point the auto executable to your IRQ settings and stuff, your 220s, your IRQ5. You needed to do this in order for the digital audio to work. So now we have we have MIDI. MIDI seems to work fine in these DOS programs, but uh, there is no uh, digital audio right here. Gus here, he should be talking via CD-ROM audio. But we don't have audio. Uh, that this destroys all all DOS game support. So not only the games that require you to reboot into pure MS DOS mode, it destroys even just the simple DOS things that should run in a shell. The fact that you can't have digital audio that is a game changer. It really just it really tells everybody. You know, there's no reason. There's no real reason to have Windows Millennium Edition here. Like, there's no... There, we don't have any option there. There's no option to start in um, DOS mode. I'm just uh, just uh, showing all of that off. And I believe I will uh, create a floppy disk uh, a, uh, from Windows Me itself, a startup disk, just to show you all that, uh, well, it's still based off of DOS, everybody, because I'm going to make it... I'm going to make a startup disk. I'm going to restart the, the operating system with the startup disk, and, well, you'll see. You'll see just uh, where uh, it will uh, launch. So I've been showing you some uh, recent uh, looks from other people uh, in regards to historically what they're thinking of uh, Windows Millennium Edition. How about we go back in time to what they were thinking back when it was first uh, launched. Here is a review from Matt Lake. Uh, for CNET, June 28th of 2000, the good. A streamlined interface, faster boot times, offers easier tech support, includes cool multimedia tools, and brand new Internet Explorer 5.4. 
How dare you put that in the good category? <laughs> the bad. Runs Windows applications slower than Windows 98. The most attractive new tools, such as Windows Media Player, are already available for free download elsewhere. <laughs> the bottom line, Millennium is a great facelift for Windows 98, but it's not necessarily an upgrade. If you have technical difficulties or work with pictures or music, try the new OS. But if you're happy with Windows 98, stick with that. It got three out of five stars. Continuing on to their full review, the latest edition of Windows has a brand new name, but it's not the whole new bag of tricks you might expect. Windows Millennium Edition, aka Windows Me, is the company's third update to Windows 98. In a few months, you'll actually be able to buy a copy, and in a few months, you probably won't be able to buy a new home PC without it. But despite the brouhaha, it turns out that Millennium only adds up to about Windows 98 three and a quarters. It offers the same customizable user profiles as Windows 95 and only a few upgrade from Windows uh, 98 and despite promises of greater speed and stability our tests found that Windows Millennium was in some cases actually slower than its predecessor now here quite oddly it actually repeats the paragraph that I just read it repeats it for a second time I have no idea why I did that, but uh, we'll go down to the next uh, paragraph. In fact, anyone who needs under-the-hood business features, robust IT level security, for example, should lean towards Windows 2000 instead, especially since Microsoft plans to use the same pricing structure as Windows 98 second editions. Businesses won't even get price breaks on multiple copies of Millennium. If you run Windows at home, on the other hand, the decision to upgrade is a toss-up. You'll be able to download cool new Millennium tools such as the new Media Player and uh, Internet Explorer 5.5 for free without the upgrade. And Mii's uh, speedier boot up time uh, won't even work unless your entire PC supports it. Which undoubtedly won't unless you buy Millennium pre-installed. But for home Windows buffs who like the idea of uh, better technical help, improved sound and video features, and other small but neat enhancements, Windows Me might sound mighty tempting. So, before you clear uh, about uh, 300 megabytes from your hard drive to make room and shell out 109 for the upgrade or 209 for the full version, consider our review of Millennium's uh, new tricks. So we're going to wrap this one up here. And there were some other reviews, including ABC News, which uh, weren't uh, too fond of it either. And they, they gave it a thorough testing of three different computers. Uh, one uh, that had it pre-installed from the beginning. One uh, you know where they upgraded from Windows 98. And another one. And one of them he didn't even, wouldn't even boot into Windows Me at all. Uh, uh, oddly, a PC uh, magazine actually uh, gave it four out of five stars, rating it excellent. That's odd, but uh, I'll probably show some of those uh, in my written review at shot97retro.blogspot.com. Everybody uh, check that out. Here I am just uh, showing you that I'm about to uh, delete this sucker and put in Windows 98. So, uh... Yes, that is uh, the review, my review for Windows Millennium Edition. I'm not too fond of it these days. I suppose it might be an okay a system uh, for your retro computer, but not really because there's just, just get Windows 98. It's the better choice. In terms of stuff to point you to, again, check out the written review at shot97retro.blogspot.com. Check out uh, my video, or my last video review, which nobody watched. One like, one like for Dilbert's Desktop Games, you assholes. You know, you don't have to like it, but to ignore it. Fuck you or fuck YouTube, uh, one or the other. That's what I have to say about that. Dilbert's Desktop Games. Check out uh, Necromancers, DOS, Navigator, an application I did. Uh, check out Excellence, and check out uh, uh, Marauder 2. Subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff. Uh, let me know uh, what you thought of this uh, little dive into an operating system if you like it. Uh, Maybe I will do some more. Maybe I'll check out Windows 95 or 98. Maybe I'll even go into Windows 2000 or NT or something. I don't know. Uh, it depends on your response, actually. 
See you all later. Goodbye.